What's up, YouTubians? Welcome back to another day and another video. Today, we got some work to do on the Baja. If you notice by the thumbnail, yeah, let, let me just show you kind of what happened yesterday. <laughs> So yeah, that was the first time I've ever had to be towed home on a flatbed. Why did I have to be towed home on my flatbed? Well, there's the wheel and the drum, all right? Didn't lose lug nuts. So what happened? What happened was, is the axle stub actually broke. So normally right here, you'd have the threaded part where that castle nut screws on and holds your drum. Yeah, that, uh, that came off. So today we need to dive into this and see what's going on. Luckily the shock tower, it drug down the road on the shock tower and the backing plate a little bit right here. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into this, see what's going on, see what all's damaged, and see what it's gonna take to fix it. So stay tuned, stick around, let's get some work done again. I did have somebody ask me, hey, you know, what, what do you think caused this? I don't know. I had somebody else say, Gary, you torqued down the castle nut too much. That's what broke it. Well, I'm pretty sure that, um, you notice, you see where the difference is? You got threaded here, no threaded there. I can pretty much guarantee you that that's a stock part from 1969. I've had the drum off one time. I highly doubt me torquing it properly would break it when it's been possibly abused off-roaded how many times has that been apart possibly over torqued yeah let's see what all's wrong all right just by doing a visual inspection real quick we can tell that brake shoes brand new brake shoes got a little bit of damage here might be okay uh, we're missing the keeper spring right here for that side so we'll go ahead and start disconnecting this Oh, that one's bent up. There we go. Let's pull the pins out so we don't lose those. My tool's rolling down the driveway. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so those are all right. Spring's all right, but that got mangled up pretty good. So that shoe right there definitely has a gouge in it and stuff. The other shoe appears to be okay. It's got a little bit of stuff on it, but should be all right. But down here, the backing plate definitely did get damaged. So we're gonna have to pull the backing plate off. These four bolts here, take the cap off, take our wheel cylinder off. Oh great, I got to bleed brakes again. Uh, we'll pull the one nut off over here that holds your e-brake cable on. And we can take the backing plate off and try straightening that out. Well, luckily I don't see any damage on the wheel cylinder yet. So that's a good thing. The boot's wanting to slide off and push it out though. Now, once you disconnect your brake line, one thing you can do to keep from losing all your fluid is if you have a rubber cap on your bleeder, take that cap off and put it on the line, or just grab yourself a small vacuum line fitting, and you can pull that right off and just stick that right on the end. I grabbed one too small, but I can make it work. And there you go. Now you're not going to lose all your brake fluid. All right, next we have our e-brake cable we want to pull. So that one 13 millimeter bolt in the back holds the little retainer on. Fish that right out of the backing plate. Now we just have these four, well, it should be 14s, I believe. Let's 
seal still looks good. Now again, you don't have to do this. I'm doing it just because I want to see kind of what's going on here. And there we can see, <laughs> we definitely had a little bit of a little bit of road rash. So we need to try to straighten this out. It's basically just the bottom, bend it back down, straighten it back out. We should be all right to go back on. So we'll get to that here in a moment. Other than that, this all looks good. In order to replace what actually broke, all we need to do is remove the CV axle. We should be able to slide it out, slide the new one in, make sure our spacers are correct. Then we can go ahead and put the drum back on after we finish all this up. So let's get to that. All right, for this next part, you don't really need to have the backing plate off and the brakes apart and all that jazz. We're gonna go ahead and pull the CV axle off so we can go ahead and get the stub axle out of here and we get that replaced. Now I took a pick and I cleaned out all of the bolts, cleaned them out really good, all right? Sprayed it with brake clean and then blew it out with a compressor real well. Most of the time, do this by hand, don't do, use an impact, but that's one of those do as I say, not as I do. All right, now that that's loose, we're gonna pull our axle all the way. Well, maybe. I didn't have that one all the way out. What the heck? There we go. We'll just stick that up top to hold it in place. We'll go ahead and take some zip ties and just zip tie the axle to the shock so it doesn't fall and break on us. That would not be good. There we go, axle secured. Lots of grease in it though. You're not even watching what I'm doing. There we go. <laughs> Zip tie around the CV axle to the shock. Got lots of grease in there, all that's good. All right, moving on. All right, now with the axle zip tied up out of the way, we should be able to go ahead and work this out. Oh, CV grease. That does not want to budge. Well, that's a lot of grease. I'll stick that back in the CV there. So if you were going to be replacing your bearings, now would be the time to do it, right? Because you got stub axle out, everything's out. So that's what the difference is right there. That's where it just snapped right off. I looked at this one real close with a magnifying glass. Looks like it's good, so Go ahead and tap that one in. There we go. Don't forget your spacers. Make sure those are in. Now it's just uh, reverse order to put everything back together. Now one thing I will tell you is I was not able to get this fixed up really well, but it's gonna work for now until we can get something else in place just don't have a spare one of those right now. Anybody see my... There we go. Never mind. We'll seal all this. I'll pull this back apart later. Seal all this back up. Just trying to get it at least moved so I can move it around and get out of the driveway. Now I'm curious to know if the drum's going to rub. Oh yeah, it's gonna rub. There's already a gaping hole in the bottom. I don't know why I'm trying to save this. There, problem solved. Look at that. No more rub-a-dub-dub. <laughs> All right, so now let's just put the axle back on, put the brakes back together. Bye. All right, 
we'll go back and torque those afterwards as well. We are looking really good. We'll go ahead and put the wheel cylinder back on, put some shoes back on, and I think we'll be looking for a few little brake parts. Need a backing plate. We got a big old gaping hole back there, but again, it's runnable for now. Just it will need to be replaced later. Huh. That just tighten in easier than ever. Like I've never had one go that easy. Once this gets snugged up, we'll go ahead and grab a line wrench. And snug up the line properly with a line wrench so we don't strip anything out. And that's pretty much it for the back here, except for bleeding the wheel cylinder here. So again, you use your line wrench. That's the difference in a line wrench. It wraps around more. So you get a better contact patch with it and get it tightened up without rounding off that little hex part. There we go. Well guys, that could have been a lot worse. Luckily, you know, we're pretty much back together. I got everything torqued, got a cotter pin in. It's a little small, but it's all right. Rear brakes are adjusted, bled out, all that squared away. So really the only thing we have to do is replace the backing plate because, well, we got a hole right there. Other than that, we're good to go. Except for my sad fender. <laughs> and look at this. I lost the tail light, can't find it. My blinker's still there, but it ripped the wires out. Have another one of those, but I do not have another one of the brake lights and connectors, so I'm gonna have to order that. Wiring did really good, except for where the wires ripped outside of the shielding. Fender is cracked up a little bit. So I think what I might be able to do is put some large washers get that bolted back on and once that's bolted back on we'll probably do a fiberglass repair right there and call that done so for now i think that's pretty much it at least i can put the tire back on it and call it done except for the backing plate but again in the grand scheme of things <laughs> this could have been a lot worse right the tire even though it was this tire that came off. The tire was over that side about a quarter mile back. The fender was over that side of the road somewhere. Um, probably a good 20 yards off the road. Luckily, nothing hit anybody. There was like one or two cars behind me. Um, and, and they stayed back. I was staying back from the person that was stopping. Everything went well. I just kind of steered slightly slowly to the side of the road till i came to a stop things can always be worse right got to uh out of all the years of having a volkswagen finally got to get towed home and use that insurance policy for once go figure guys i appreciate you being here thanks for sticking around we're going to do a video soon on why we haven't really been making much progress on the 60 and why we haven't really been doing a whole lot around here and why Levi's been helping so much more. Stay tuned for that. Still working out details on how I want to do that video. Be good. Love it when the sky looks like this. Took the Baja out for a drive, go get some new tires on it. Oops. <laughs> Drum's still there. Axle nut I can't find because stub axle broke. Hopefully my brand new shoes are okay. Well, that's what it is. Funny thing is, we slid from all the way back there, and the tire was all the way over there. <laughs> it's always an adventure, guys. Be good and enjoy your weekend.